enjoyed your um, your interview uh, uh, with Rick. It was good. That's good. <laughs> okay, let's get down to business. All right, enough of the small talk. <laughs> yeah. I um I wrote a course uh, to try and help people uh, out of uh, depression. Yes. Yeah. It, it's essentially it talks about stuff. It talks about stories that we create, and, and also I linked it to the brain. There's a part of the brain that helps form habits. Is tied to the survival, and so this can be a quite a dominant voice. And when this becomes a dominant voice, the rational voice that says, "Listen, what are you what are you worried about?" It it, it kind of just dies down. You don't even hear it because because of the, the habitual negative voice that's spinning out. This is my take on, on it, okay? But I don't think it's enough. I think I'm missing something. And that's why I called you. And what do you think you're missing? <laughs> uh, I don't know. What am I missing? I don't know what I'm missing. Uh, you know, um, my, my take on it is that um, the more you engage with these voices, the more you keep it alive. Okay, so my, I've said that, look, by not engaging with it, eventually these voices die down. Um, it's a bit like watching a movie, or well, I used the, the description of watching a movie, where, you know, if you're engaged with the characters in the movie, then you feel all the emotions that they're feeling. But if you have no uh, kind of engagement or no identification with the characters, then, you know, as soon as the movie's over, you just walk off, you don't think about it twice. So... I guess I'm 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 still engaged myself with these characters in my head. The mind has to discriminate the thoughts and shift the attention from it. Now you cannot shift the attention if you don't if you don't have an anchor to shift it to. So in ancient traditions they either use the breath as an anchor they use the bodily sensation as an anchor especially for people who are more outwardly bent and if they are depressed it's more likely not necessarily yes they would not necessarily experience who they are which is stillness silence which is basically their true nature and that's when you examine the thoughts and ideas and you see that the thoughts are not real the self which is you the silence can shine through so i found that when people are depressed working with the breath is very helpful observing the breath as it is and working with the sensation Okay, so, so when, when you say like working with the breath, um, do you mean that you refocus your attention onto the breath? Yes, you basically sit still or you stop, it doesn't really matter, and you start observing the breath and then the mind wanders, escapes the breath and you shift the attention, you bring it back, start again. When you observe the breath, then you can see, you can actually see that the negativity is um, is imaginary because the only sensation that appears to be real in that moment is the breath it's the experience versus thoughts the experience of the breath versus the thoughts this is the discrimination right, right. Okay, I, I find working with negativity is 
also if one is able to work with the thoughts and ask like eh, I'm negative is it true I'm not supposed to feel this thought is it true if you question this this is very powerful I think it would be good for you to check the work of Byron Katie you know her work uh, yeah I, I know of her work I don't know her work but I know so you know of her or you know of the work no no I, I know I've heard of her okay. <laughs> I don't know her I don't know her I think I saw her again on um, on uh, with Rick's uh, interview uh, the back it's, end, it's, uh, back it, it's called thework.com and it, her name is Baron Katie and right. what's interesting is she shares four questions and turn around and she works with any cases, people depressed, anything, if they are willing to examine their beliefs. Have, have you have you experienced a lot of uh, with the people that you work with? Uh, people, I was going to ask if you experienced a, a lot of depression, or do you find that people that are searching for the truth ultimately are in some ways depressed? No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. People who go deep within themselves, if they're depressed, they cannot do deep work. Because depression it, it cannot. It's, the depression is just identifying with the thoughts, believing them to be so real. It's all, I call it, on the surface. It's, it's all on the surface? Yeah. 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 See, I, I must be depressed. Because uh, I get it, in theory. <laughs> I get it in theory. I've got some brilliant quotes on um, that I can share with you. I'm sure you've heard them all. But uh, about truthness and aliveness and being awake and stuff. But uh, uh, for me, it's just all in the head. Yeah, because you don't experience it. No, that's right, yeah. yeah. I know. Why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? I'm not... I need to come and visit you, I think, yeah? Sorry. I think you haven't been around, either you haven't been around um, a being that shared the truth and then uh, in the presence experience it for yourself yeah. and not uh, enough uh, ability to discern, discriminate the thoughts. So I, I don't really know. There are, there are people in England that share. Yeah. Yeah. Can you recommend any or? I don't know any. <laughs> Maybe Muji. There's a man, Rupert. Muji. Yeah, I've, I've heard of Muji. I think he's a, I think he's a Rupert Spira. Uh, uh, Rupert. Rupert Spira. Spira. Rupert Spira? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've heard of him. Yeah, I've, I've heard of him. It's, yeah, they, there are, yeah, there's, um, I think there's a guy called Richard Sylvester. Have you heard of him? Uh, Tony Parsons. So, okay, so as, as far as kind of depression uh, is concerned, do you, do you believe that these stories that we create, why, why don't you think that we create these stories in our head and why do some of them seem to uh, turn into uh, negative habitual stories for some people and others, others not? The, the ego, the false eye, that identifies itself as a separate entity, as a physical body, is driven by negativity, is driven by conflict, because it, what the engine of it is wanting pleasure and avoiding pain. So wanting means conflict with the present moment. Wanting means missing something, lacking, negative. And when I don't get what I want, there's frustration, anger, and violence. And also, wanting means um, fear, dark. Fear is darkness. So, if I want something, I'm afraid I'm not going to gain it. And once I have something, I don't want to lose it. So, I'm afraid too. So, then that's what drives the ego. 
described me perfectly. No, I describe what you're not. I didn't <laughs> describe who you are. See, okay. who you okay. are is Wait. already... I have, I have two brothers, uh, okay? and we're all different. Brought up by the same uh, parents. Why would some it picks one way and another, another way? Why does it seem to do that? It has nothing to do with family. It's about the journey that everyone has. So the wise says it's all karma. You just, in coincidence, were born apparently to the same mother or not and then grown up in the same family yet each one has its own personality and journey they have to walk through. Right. So, so it doesn't really matter. So, so you, you don't think the you don't think the social conditioning has has much to do with it, or mm, very little. Oh, very little. Very little. That would, exp that would explain a lot. See, I was going to blame my neurotic Greek mother. Yeah, that's what the mind likes is <laughs> not to take responsibility. So I would blame the society. I would yeah. blame the mother, the father, the brother an incident that was traumatic and then I would say that's the reason why I'm like that and not seeing that I needed all of that in order for me to wake up from this dream. See there are no mistakes everything that happens happens perfectly in the perfect timing and everything happens for me to see that it's not who I truly am. So nothing really is happening to me, it's happening for me to see that it's not me. And okay, so uh, as, assuming that's that's true, and, and it certainly begins to feel like that, because every time I try to move away from depression or these feelings of negativity, it seems to kind of pull me back in. So perhaps um, I'm feeling that maybe I haven't resolved this in, in, in the proper way. Is that is that what you're saying? Yeah, I see that negativity it just, it just thoughts, beliefs that come into the surface and they generate bodily sensation which is emotion. You have to learn to be present enough with that. So you stop being scared of feeling. Stop being scared of thoughts because the mind thinks and it's scared of its own imagination, believing it to be real. Yeah. And when you start seeing the thoughts for what they are, just images, empty concepts, then you not the mind stops being afraid of the thoughts. And then when you can be with the sensation, then the mind stops reacting to the sensation. This is where I find Vipassana, the practice of what Gwenka shared from Burma, of observing the breath and sensation, is, is very effective and powerful for that. And, that. and that's known as Vipassana? Vipassana, yes. Gwenka, if you do a search you might... Uh, they, do, they tend to do 10 days retreats. So, so, what was that? Um, I don't know what was the name of it. Gwenka. Vipassana. And, and it's Gwenka. They have many centers around the world. And it tends to be for free. That's great. And they do retreats, do they? They do 10 days retreats. And they work with depression and they work with the, they have uh, proven how even in jails it really affected the people that they never came back. They would go out and the same habits would play themselves out and they go back to jail. The ones who were exposed to the practice did the 10 day retreat and they practiced daily. When they were released from jail, they never came back means it broke the habit pattern of the mind. Right. right, right. Well, that's, that's, that's interesting. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Do, do you, did you say that you've worked with a lot of uh, depressed, you've worked with depressed people? Have you? Some. 
some, yeah. Because I think I had an interview and, um, with, with some woman that was, was upset, was, was clearly very upset uh, and stuff. And I can imagine, um, well, actually, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, the, if, if somebody is searching, if somebody searches you, seeks out to find somebody like yourself, there obviously must be some conflict there, whether it's called depression or not. There must be some um, something going on where they're not happy in the present. Of course, there is a, right. the mind is discontent. I find that the, it's, it, the only thing that is depressing is to believe the thoughts to be real. That's quite depressing. And the only way I can start to see that the thoughts are not real is when I start to examine them. Question the thoughts, question the beliefs. Otherwise, out of habit, I believe the thought to be the reality and I get attached to the thought because I am seeking the reality itself yet I'm seeking it in the mind and the reality is behind the mind beyond the mind itself so I'm looking for the truth for reality in the wrong direction so then I'm very frustrated discontent not satisfied upset lost feel hopeless so I mean you, you pretty much described like 99% of the population I, mean. <laughs> yeah. I don't know so, so going along that definition pretty much everybody's depressed or on, on some kind of level of depression uh, you know Buddha, the, Buddha. Um, you see I, I've heard this many times before there's not, not what you're saying uh, but certainly around what you're saying, this idea that don't believe the thoughts, the truth isn't in the thoughts. But obviously for the mind, it's very difficult, not difficult, it's impossible for the mind to understand that something can exist outside the thoughts. Is that right? Yes, except even prior to that, is the mind, there is an aspect of the mind, because in the mind we have, let's say, the self, is a source of light. It is a happiness itself. It is supreme peace. Yes? Because it's changeless. Changeless awareness. Now it illuminates itself and then it illuminates everything else. So now it illuminates the thoughts. Yeah? The thoughts that are the mind, that there's, the mind will divide it to a higher mind, higher intelligence and lower mind. The higher mind is closer to the light, to the source of light. So, basically, if I take a flashlight, the further I am from the source of the light in the flashlight, the less I see. The less light there is, the less I see, more darkness. Because darkness is absence of light. The closer I get to the source of the light, of the flashlight, the more light I have, the more the less darkness there is, right? So depression is just being so far away from the source of light of the beingness of who you are. So what happens, the lower mind identifies as a physical body. The higher mind discerns the thoughts themselves, means it examines if the thought that appear to be real, are they real? Or the thought that think that they are in a physical object, are they physical object or just images? Now, the mind itself can wake up to itself. What does it mean? I dream at night while sleeping and I believe the thought, the dream to be totally real, right? I wake up from the dream and I realize it was just a dream. It was a mental understanding. So the mind can examine itself and wake up to see that the thoughts are not real. Because when the mind woke up from the dream, it realized that the dream was not real. And all that happened in the dream was visions, dream visions, thoughts of the mind, nothing more. So okay, the mind has the ability to wake up and see that the thoughts are not real. 
the more the mind sees that the thoughts are not real, they turn to be transparent. They turn to be transparent means if there is a heavy cloud, thick, then underneath, if you are in the earth, you cannot see the sun going through it. The less the cloud thick, the sun shines through the clouds, right? And it can be seen. So the less the thoughts appear to be real, then they are turned to be transparent and the light of the beingness of who you are just shine through them. Okay. Yeah. That's my question that was in my head. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, I, I see. So it's a, it's a recognition that these habitual negative thoughts, even positive thoughts, I guess, but these habitual thoughts are not real. Yes. Once, once they're seen through over and over again, at some point, the light you suggested is shines through it's actually it shines through in that moment and the more it shines through it peers through the darkness it removes the ignorance and ignorance is just forgetting who I truly am and so I mistake something for something else I mistake myself for the voice in the head that talks to itself thinking all kind of thoughts to that which is silently aware and it doesn't even have a preference which thoughts appear or disappear. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's good. It's very good. Okay, so the rational mind, my rational mind, here's what you say. And, and I'm going, yes, I, I agree with this. Now, at some point when you're gone, I'm like, I don't know, you know, maybe. so again, do you think that's just the negative habitual thoughts coming back in again? That's right, that's right. Also what happens with pain, emotional pain, emotional pain, the mind, if it is conditioned to be fed on it, it is addictive to it. It's an addiction. What, the only addiction is attaching to thoughts, yes? So what happens, let's say I'm conditioned to have negativity and I derive the sense of individual, individuality from this negativity. So I'm, I am addicted to it to feel that I am an individual entity because then it appears to be more real. It's supporting the story of your own individuality. Yeah. Even if even if it means being negative, even if it means being depressed. Even if it means that it's painful. Yeah. So although the mind hates it, when it hates it, it resists it and that's why that's how it feeds the energy and sustains it. Yeah. Yeah. So hating the situation sustains it so it's the mind innocently just trapped in a is trapped in a loop and it has to be broken only if one has the desire within to break free of this not otherwise i have the desire <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> so now Desire has to be followed with knowledge and then action. The movement of the universe externally, creation, is five movements. Desire, knowledge, action, then you get the result to enjoy. Now look at what happened. You had a desire to speak. You had the knowledge how to contact myself. You took action based on the desire and knowledge. You, we got the result, we imagining, we talking. And you might see something. I see some things. So that's exactly the five movements. When the mind goes back, it drops the, the first, the last two. It takes up action because it has the desire to be free 
based on knowledge, not based on ignorance. Because ignorance is darkness and knowledge is light. Light removes the darkness and disappears into the source of light, which is the beingness of who you are. It's up to you. Are, you. are you giving a talk over here or? It's... Um, if you would coordinate anything in London, yeah. then I'd be more than open to come. Okay. And I'm less interested in a talk. I'm more interested in... I see both. Talk can satisfy the mind. It's not enough. They, they, it should go through an experience. So knowledge and practice are two sides or two wings of the bird. Knowledge is one wing. Practice is another. Knowledge without practice, one wing, wing the bird cannot fly. Practice without knowledge one wing, wing, the bird cannot fly. Knowledge and practice, then the bird can fly free. So, I like to always combine both, experiential and knowledge. So they would be lived and not just be philosophically understood. I'm not interested in philosophy. I'm interested that the mind would go through transformation and true liberation. Otherwise, it's just mere talk. Not interesting. It's a waste of yeah. time. You know, I'm, I'm with you, and uh, believe me, a lot of people that I've spoken to who are depressed also had enough suffering. So they would, they would like to see some freedom from, <laughs> from that. So the, the practice that you, you get involved in, is it through this, is it called Gwen, Gwenka? Vipassana, you mean? The Vipassana stuff. Is it the Vipassana stuff that you, you offer as practice? No. no. Although in Mexico, I've done about eight retreats that we did a 10-day retreat. And then in these 10 days, uh, basically I shared the knowledge and um, there was the practice. Yet, this is just, I see it's a preparation to really work with the thoughts. Again, I find when someone is depressed, means depression is always expressed in a physical reaction as a bodily sensation. So if you, and that's always heaviness. So if you learn to work with the sensation of the body, then you stop reacting to the sensation. Now you're ready to work with the thoughts. So I'd like to combine them. Yet I've never done any practice of Vipassana or Gwenka. It's not what comes through as an expression of what comes through this mind. It's much more subtle. It's working with the thought and experiencing who you are. Pointing to who you are so you can have the recognition of the silence within and fix the attention on that. Thank you. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, <laughs> I've asked a lot of questions. Do you have any for me? If you would have one desire. Yes. What would it be? Uh, I think my, de my desire, if I have one desire, I've been listening to, um, you know, with all due respect, people that speak in, in the way that you speak for a few years now, and it sounds wonderful. To have uh, freedom sounds wonderful. That, that would be my, my, one, uh, my one wish. Okay. Freedom so, from the mind. Yeah, so... 
if that would be your only desire then seek knowledge and takes action take action based on that knowledge means the action is internal it's discriminating concentrating concentrating the mind and inquiring into your true nature so it's all inner action and then surround the mind with what's externally will appear to push the mind inward into the beingness of who you are means if you go out and you meet a friend and you talk about the future and what your plans gonna be you go into a dream and if you come and meet somebody who talks about pointing back where you shift the attention and start discriminating and concentrating and inquire into your true nature and you sit quiet and you you look within then it push the, the mind into the beingness of who you are so an awakened being in his presence two things happen apparently it appears he push your mind inside and he pulls your mind from within to the beingness of who you are because if he is awake he is the beingness which is you so it's like a magnet magnet and the mind is like a needle it attracts the mind back into you Time. I'm, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I'm, I'm sure you get uh, a lot of people uh, wanting to speak with you, and I appreciate uh, Imbo who set it up for, for me. Exactly. Yeah. Actually, mm, people imagine that they want to speak with me, yet. If they're too interested in dreaming, they don't want to be around me. Because if they believe the dream to be real, it ruins their dream. Because they don't have a true yearning to wake up to who they truly are. And the second thing that I find is that because there is pain within all of us, one has to go through the pain and willing to observe it, experience it, and look at it, inner looking, look at it in the face. So it's not unconsciously keep running your life. And then the mind doesn't like that because all that it likes is give me some relaxation and give me some pleasure I don't want pain I have enough pain so when people come we meet sometimes daily for six hours like today we met 8 to 11 and then we just met until 7.30 to 10 and some people come twice because they really are, they want to um, be established in who they are. They already recognize who they are. They see the mind dreaming. They see that they are not the mind who's thinking. And they are very earnest about the quest. And now it's only between themselves. They just, the environment maybe supports them, that's all. So, they are willing to go through whatever arises within them. Any thoughts, any emotions, to go through it. Because when you go through it, it releases itself. And that's it, it's gone. Forever. I, yeah, I mean, I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's a fantastic gift. If you can help somebody like that, I mean, I, I see, um, I see people suffering, 
and uh, they've had enough of their pain. You know, it's uh, it's really tough for some people in the head. You know, they, their circumstances may be fantastic. They may have money. They may have everything, but they 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 can't find any peace in all that stuff. Because there isn't peace in the objects of the world, and there is no peace in the mind because the nature of the mind is restless. It is a movement within that which never moves, which is supreme peace. And that's our, our, our nature. This is why you cannot buy it. You cannot gain it. You have to remove the false identification or the false notion that you are a separate entity. And then here, here you are. You are already that. So the whole work is removing, undoing. Is not gaining. It's exactly the opposite direction that the ego is driven. It's in reverse. I call it returning, reverse, rather than going out, forward. So there is no progression in this work. There is regression of the mind back to who you are. It returns. Yeah. This is a very uh, radical and quite a difficult uh, idea for some, some people. I mean, for me, uh, it was it to begin with. The idea of this was quite uh, radical. But for some people that haven't even looked at spirituality, like it's 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 kind of shocking to think. But the nature of the mind is restless because that's exactly where they look for the peace. They look for peace in the mind and, and in objects. It takes, they, it's not. It's obvious when they see that they never found it there. Well, that's that's <laughs> that's right. I'm just going to let my dog out. I, I'm like Rick. <laughs> I'm like Rick with these dogs. Yeah, you're right, but. The, the, the thing is, I mean, I, I learned, I mean, I learned late in life, you know, but uh, it took forever to find that because I looked everywhere for it outside and I couldn't find it. And so then I started looking for it in my mind and I couldn't find it. So that's when I got depressed. That's right. It's quite depressing. Yeah, it's, it's like, very depressing. It's like you don't realize that there is you don't realize that there is a way out. So the only way out is actually turning in. So it's again exactly the opposite direction. You're right. It's, it's, you're right, but it's really difficult uh, for some. Uh, I mean, I, I experience uh, depression on a level that I feel now that I have an understanding of it. And I wrote a course and I've been helping people with it. But I don't have the level of freedom that you talk about, but I, I, even if I don't, it doesn't, I mean, there are some people that, well, some people, they, they, I think the statistics are something like 800,000 people a year kill themselves. You know, for me, it sounds like a way of ending their story of the madness that's going on in their heads. You know, it's, it's, um, you know, it's tough on everybody. It's tough on them. It's tough on their families and their friends. It's, it looks like you're, you're concerned about them. And this is very beautiful. So why don't you become the first one to inspire all of them by doing the work on you and experiencing more and more freedom? And maybe you're the one who's going to be able to impact so many depressed people on the planet except you have to go through the journey first. You have to go and show the way. Yeah, no, that's right. I mean, I, I, can't, I can't go and speak about it if, if, if I don't, you know, if I haven't experienced it myself. You're absolutely right. People do that. People yeah, talk about people all kinds of things I mean, without being, ex the, without having the experience. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I, I look for a little bit more authenticity. That's why I wanted to speak to you. No, I, you know what, it's beautiful what you say, uh, and I, um, like, you know, well, this is my journey, I mean, the fact that we, 
met and stuff through Skype is, is wonderful, but this is my journey. I mean, I, I see that, you know. Uh, you know, I thought I was going to be some playboy, uh, but that didn't work out for me. That's okay. Thank you. <laughs> That's okay. Because I don't know what it means. This is great. Oh, thank you very much again. I, um, and again, You're I, welcome. I really appreciate you spending the time with me. Matt. You're welcome. Um, I'll, I'll look into it if it's of interest to you. I'll look and see whether there's anything that, that can be done in terms of you coming over. If, if, if you're willing, I'll, I'll, I'll send an email anyway just to let you know what what my what my excavation has done to see whether I can... Uh, I have a friend in London. If you would want to speak with him, I can connect you and uh, I'll ask him. And uh, maybe... You can connect and see what resonates for you and him. Yes, yeah, it'd be my pleasure. I mean, I know that there are venues where people, you know, people talk um, in, in London, and uh, it, it seems to be certainly something that has been more uh, open to expressed, and people are showing much more interest. So yeah, it would be a pleasure to connect with your with your friend. So um, you have my email. Um, if you don't mind sending me an email unless you want to tell me the details now. I'll uh, talk with him first and then I'll switch between you two and if you want to connect it would happen, if not... Yeah, no, that would be great. That would be great. Thank you again. You're welcome. Have, have a good evening. All the very best. Alright, take care.